Lair Wilson is the new English teacher at Westbrook High School. Upon arrival, she prepares for her first day and meets Catherine, the French teacher. Later, Claire extends a warm welcome to her senior class, where we're introduced to Eric Walker, a talented student and a promising athlete during soccer practice. Eric's friend Logan notices Claire leaving the school premises and comments on her attractiveness. Eric then mentions that she's his new English teacher, but Logan playfully asserts that she's too hot to be a teacher at home. Claire becomes increasingly dissatisfied with her marriage to her husband Matt, who often travels that evening. Claire receives a message that her husband won't be returning home as planned due to his flight being cancelled. Rather than finishing her wine and frozen dinner, she decides to go out to dine alone. Meanwhile, Eric goes to work at the diner before joining us friends Logan and Josh to smoke weed. Following this, they return to the diner where Claire happens to be enjoying her. However, Logan and Josh take an early leave and Eric and Claire find themselves alone. As they get talking, Claire shares a bit about herself, mentioning that she went to the University of Texas, which happens to be Eric's dream university. However, the SATs remain a hurdle for him. So Claire explains that it's more about understanding certain strategic rules. Intrigued by this, Eric asks if she'd be willing to tutor him. Surprisingly, she agrees to his request, disregarding any potential ethical concerns once they've finished their meal, Claire offers Eric a ride home, and she mentioned her brother residing nearby. As they continue their conversation, it becomes evident that this encounter leaves a lasting impression on both of them. The next evening, Claire lies to her husband that she has plans to meet with Catherine, but then goes to the diner to help Eric with his LSAT preparation. One evening, Eric attends a party hosted by his friend, but suddenly the police arrive outside, an officer pulls him aside, and asks him to take a breathalyzer test, which reveals that Eric is heavily intoxicated. Just then, Eric notices the officer's name tag, which reads Wilson, and realizes that the officer is Claire's brother Nate, desperate to get out of the situation. He decides to leverage his connection with his teacher and asks if she can be contacted to come and pick them up. Ultimately, Mate calls Claire, who agrees to pick Eric up, and even manages to convince her brother to let her go. As she arrives, Claire gives them an obligatory lecture for his foolishness and warns them not to reveal that she picked him up or that Nate let them off the hook. Regardless, she laughs at Eric's silly actions and even suggests dropping the formalities and using her first name Claire outside of school the following morning. Claire surprises Eric by showing up at his house and spontaneously asking him on a field trip to the University of Texas. Later on, he confesses that he feels he can trust Claire and apologizes once again for the other night. Their conversation gets interrupted by Cody Eric's friend, who happens to be a student at the university Cody, that invites both of them to a house party and Claire accepts on Eric's behalf. Later that evening, Claire returns home to discover that Matt has spent a significant portion of their savings on musical instruments, infuriated and filled with resentment. Claire reluctantly accepts Eric's friend requests that night at school. Eric spots Claire in the distance down the hallway and approaches her as they enter her classroom to talk. He expresses his fondness for the moments they spend together outside of school. Unexpectedly, he tries to kiss her, but Claire immediately stops him and requests that he leave. The next day, Eric stays behind after class to have a conversation with Claire about their kiss. However, she quickly interrupts some and firmly states that what happened yesterday was unacceptable. Moreover, Claire expresses her concern that her life would be ruined if anyone discovered what occurred. Eric reassures her that he hasn't revealed anything to anyone and has no intention of doing so. Although Claire initially hesitates about continuing to tutor him, Eric explains that he can't afford the classes that everyone else is taking. Reluctantly, Claire agrees as Eric guarantees that won't happen again. Later that day, she notices Eric talking to Allison in the distance. Curiously, Claire eavesdrops on the conversation as he persuades the girl to attend the homecoming dance with him. The following day, Eric receives a text from Claire asking about their tutoring session, but he doesn't respond. Meanwhile, she grows impatient while waiting at the diner, but eventually heads to the homecoming party. At the party, Alison and Eric take to the dance floor as Claire pays close attention. 
Afterward, she intercepts Eric in the hallway and expresses her disappointment that he failed to show up after pleading with her to tutor him. In response, Eric confesses to being strongly attracted to her and worries that he won't be able to control himself throughout the rest of the party. They exchanged multiple meaningful glances later. Clearly, it's Eric outside to her car and they drive away from the party as they reach a secluded location. She reassures them that they don't have to proceed if he's not comfortable with it. Then, upon receiving Eric's consent, she asks him to move to the back seat, and before long, the to hook up. Afterward, Claire arrives home and chuckles to herself while sitting alone in her car. The next day, Eric meets with Josh and Logan and pretends he was sick using that as an excuse for leaving the dance early. He then ponders his night with Claire and sends her a message recounting it. As the conversation progresses, Eric's messages become more actual, but Claire quickly deletes the messages without responding to them. After the class ends, Claire approaches Eric and suggests scheduling more tutoring sessions since the SATs are just two weeks away. She then offers to meet them after practice that night, and they agree on the arrangement. Once together, she emphasizes that if anyone were to find out about their relationship, she would be in trouble. So Claire sets a few ground rules, such as not taking any photos and changing her name on Eric's phone. Furthermore, Claire also demands that they only meet once a week on Mondays. Nevertheless, she reminds Eric that it is Monday and they hook up once again in her car. The next evening, Eric's mother, Cindy, goes out on a date, leaving Eric in charge of his siblings. Meanwhile, Claire drinks with Catherine who notices a hickey on her neck. Shortly after that, Claire goes to the bathroom and gazes at her reflection before taking a picture of her cleavage. She then sends it to Eric and eventually asks to see him, although initially explaining that he can't meet. He subsequently sends a text suggesting they meet at their usual spot. Then once they're together, Eric hesitates and asks her about their boundaries. Suddenly, he blurts out that he's never been with someone like her before. Claire also reassures him that she feels the same way and that to hook up yet again. On Eric's birthday, Claire takes him out on a vacation to spend some time together the next morning the two wake up together, but their cosy moment is interrupted by a call from Matt. Eric then quickly gets dressed and watches Claire. She talks to Matt about his band's first gig later that evening. Eric reminds her that it's their final night together, as she'll soon go back to Matt. He then questions the true meaning of their relationship and wonders if it's merely a result of boredom, reminiscent of a stereotypical housewife. In response, Claire admits to wanting to stay together, but acknowledges that it's not possible hearing this Eric apologizes and tries to comfort her, assuring her of his love and affection. Soon after, they head back home, and Claire attends Matt's first gig, accompanied by Catherine as they get talking. Catherine speculates if she's been having an affair. Claire doesn't deny this, but hesitates to reveal the identity of her boyfriend. Meanwhile, Catherine persistently asks, promising to keep it a secret as Claire continues to drink. She eventually reveals that her boyfriend is Eric Walker, leaving Catherine stunned. Catherine then reminds her that Eric's her student and argues that it constitutes a significant abuse of power. Bizarrely, Claire defends herself insisting that he's an 18-year-old adult and they genuinely love each other. However, Catherine maintains that he's just a kid and it says that she'll have to report her. The following morning, two investigators detectives, Janice and Detective Rick, arrive at Eric's house to interrogate him regarding his relationship with Claire when asked if he's ever met Claire after school he reluctantly admits to receiving tutoring from her. Eric makes every effort to safeguard their secret, but the detectives reveal that they're aware of their illicit relationship elsewhere. Matt confides in Nate about Claire's infidelity with one of her students. However, Nate believes that the authorities might not press charges if Eric states that the relationship was consensual. Meanwhile, Eric calls Claire to meet up, but she refuses and abruptly hangs up the phone. Following this, Matt assures her of his love and admits to wanting to salvage their relationship. He then proposes that they hire a lawyer and seek therapy in order to work through their challenges and avoid losing each other. 
On the other hand, Logan and Josh meet up with Eric to inquire about his relationship with their teacher. Logan envisions Eric becoming a legendary figure, but he dismisses such notions concerned about Claire. Eric expresses his worries, yet his friends remind him that Claire's an adult responsible for her own choices later that evening. Claire decides to take a walk together. Thoughts, however, she changes her mind and gets into a car to meet with Eric Claire, drives them to a secluded spot where Eric apologizes for revealing the truth. Unexpectedly, he suggests that they drive away, leaving everything behind. Upon hearing this, Claire hesitates and asserts that being together would be irrational, but Eric remains optimistic. Ultimately, they decide to head to a motel, but just then, Claire receives a call from her brother Nate. He expresses concern for her whereabouts and warns her that she could potentially face kidnapping accusations. Nevertheless, Claire joins Eric in the motel room with a drink and hook up once again. The next morning, Eric checks his phone to find several missed calls from his mother, Josh and Logan. Then, as Claire wakes up, she calls out for Eric, only to realize that he's left later. Eric returns home to his mother and cries in bed while Claire drives herself to the police station. A few months later, Eric has seen at the Omega Kappa Beta fraternity party with his old friend Cody and some other new friends. Soon enough, the conversation turns to Eric sleeping with his teacher, Claire Wilson. Will all the guys go on and on about how cool Eric is, he doesn't seem too enthusiastic about it. As the night progresses, Eric drinks some more and hooks up with a girl who reveals that she's aware of his involvement with his teacher. Nevertheless, he nonchalantly brushes it off and carries on enjoying his time with the girl the next day. Eric enjoys a meal and drinks with Cody. During their conversation, Cody expresses his belief that it was unfair how harshly Claire was treated. Since she never took advantage of Eric or engaged in any misconduct, Cody also recalls their initial meeting and the mutual affection between Claire and Eric, making him question whether their relationship should be considered a crime. It's revealed that Claire's currently spending time in the county jail after accepting a plea deal. During dinner, Sandy suggests the idea of attending counseling, but Eric adamantly refuses. She reveals that the prosecutor has contacted her to inform her about Claire's release from prison in a few days. Shortly after that, Eric assures his mother that he's all right and visits the girl he'd hooked up with at the frat party. She acknowledges that it was insensitive to bring up his relationship with his teacher and expressing her feminist beliefs. She emphasizes the importance of Eric feeling comfortable. Afterward, Eric returns to the fraternity and decides to spend the night hanging out with Cody and their friends. They drink alcohol and go on a reckless joyride in a Jeep where air climbs onto the vehicle's roof. Unfortunately, when the driver hits the brake, Eric is thrown off the vehicle and he lands on the ground, resulting in injuries and a bloodied face. Cody remains concerned about his friend, but Eric insists that he's fine. The next morning, Eric hits the fraternity house and is warmly welcomed into the fraternity that evening. The new pledges are introduced to a stripper named Karen. She then proceeds to dance for the boys, singling out Eric and giving them a lap dance. However, Eric becomes upset and leaves followed by Cody, who's concerned about his friend's state of mind. Upon returning to his dorm, Eric encounters a guy named Micah, who recognizes them as Ryan's roommate. Both acknowledge that they've had a rough night, and Mike offers them some mushrooms, which Eric accepts. After six months in prison, Claire is finally released, and her leg is now secured with an ankle monitor Natan. Her father arrived to pick her up, but while both of them warmly embrace her, she remains distant and cold. Likewise, her divorce from Matt is almost finalized, and with her husband out of the picture, Claire stays with her brother Nate. Understandably, Lisa Clare's sister-in-law feels uneasy about her presence and forbids her children from spending time with a disgraced former teacher. Meanwhile, Clare strives to return to a normal routine, going for a run in the nearby park and visiting a clothing store while at the store, an employee offers her a job application. Unexpectedly, a mother named Victoria spots Clare and loudly accuses her of being a sexual predator. Overwhelmed with shame, 
the former teacher hastily leaves the store feeling heavy-hearted and struggling to regain her composure. Despite serving a six-month sentence, Claire finds herself getting ostracized by almost everyone, and rightfully so later that evening, tensions explode during dinner. As Claire shares the day's events with her family, Lisa questions whether she should be surprised by Victoria's reaction. However, this leads to an argument between them eventually involving her brother as well. Moreover, Claire appears to have learned nothing from her experiences, as she goes as far as to say that Eric pursued her first portraying herself as the victim unimpressed. Nate confronts Claire and urges her to take responsibility for her actions, emphasizing that her troubled childhood cannot justify what she did. To make matters worse, Eric messages are to meet up, and instead of making a sensible decision, Claire invites them over to Nate's house. During their conversation, Eric blames himself for what occurred reminiscing about their happiness together in the past. As Eric expresses his need for her, Claire finally comes to her senses and distances herself, reminding him that his presence violates her probation. At last, Claire packs her belongings and moves back in with her father. Sometime later, Claire goes on a Tinder date, which goes relatively well, leading her to eventually return home with her date. However, she admits to him that she wears an ankle bracelet due to her past actions. As they hook up, he starts talking in a demeaning way about her previous affair, which makes Claire uncomfortable, struggling with a monotonous job in a divorce settlement that leaves her feeling indifferent. Claire finds herself isolated and lacking support from anyone around her in a desperate attempt to find an outlet Claire visits or dates house and asks him to hit her. Although she's enthusiastic about it, it's evident that he's not comfortable with the idea. After he strikes her forcefully across the mouth, he panics and asks if she's okay. However, Claire silently gathers her belongings and leaves back at home. Claire returns and vents her frustrations on her father, which eventually causes her to break down in return. Her father provides a sympathetic ear and assures her that she'll find a way to overcome her challenges. Meanwhile, Eric continues to face difficulties lying in bed with apathy. He shows no interest in the college experience, skips classes, and displays a different attitude. Eventually, Eric goes to a bar where a group of girls surrounds them and include them in their toast. He ends up dancing with a girl who reveals that she's not interested in hooking up since she's just come out of a long-term relationship. Afterward, Eric goes home and sees his mom finally accepting that he needs help. Ten years go by after the predatory student-teacher relationship between Claire and Eric currently leads therapeutic wilderness camps and he sits by campfire discussing the upcoming high school reunion with his friend. Although initially unsure if he should attend, he ultimately returns to his home to attend his high school reunion. Meanwhile, it seems that Claire's found stability and his move forward from her life. She is now happily married to a man named Jeffrey and his two children. Then, Claire's family gathers together at her father's place to celebrate his birthday. However, an unexpected meeting at the grocery store resulted in an uncomfortable reunion between Eric and Claire as well. They strange, awkward pleasantries and Eric leaves without his groceries and heads home. Following this, clarifies it difficult to get Eric out of her mind throughout her father's birthday celebrations. Meanwhile, Eric catches up with his friends and attends his 10-year high school reunion during the party his friends have moved on. But Eric reconnects with Alison, an old fling from the past. Surprisingly, Eric receives a message from Claire after their encounter asking to meet for lunch, while at the restaurant. They engage in casual conversations at first, but Eric finally confronts his former teacher. Claire also admits that she wanted to reach out for years but lack the courage to do so. After a decade, Eric acknowledges that their relationship had a profound and devastating impact on his life, revealing the details of Claire's predatory behavior. Furthermore, he emphasizes that it was often Claire who initiated significant moments in their relationship. Yet she's still in denial about this fact. It's evident that Eric has been deeply scarred by the predatory relationship admitting that he's lost several years of his life in the process of recovering from the trauma. Moreover, he points out that while his life was essentially shattered by the entire ordeal, Claire has moved forward with her own life.
Despite Claire's apology, there appears to be an underlying tone of self-victimization in her words. She claims that life has been equally challenging for her and mentions the difficulties she faces in finding stable jobs or participating in PTA meetings. Claire adds that she fears how her past could easily be exposed, which will alienate her from other parents. Regardless, Eric's unwilling to entertain her justifications. Finally, he asserts that Claire is still making the situation primarily about herself. Disregarding the fact that he's the one who suffered is the victim fed up with clear self-centeredness. Eric affirms that both of them will have to live with the consequences of the past and walks away,